Hi, I'm Jay Fallis, I'm the museum curator, and today we're joined with Chuck Lockman, one of our members and a very noted Packard collector and enthusiast. And Chuck, we'd like you to tell us a little bit about the brand new exhibit, Legendary Packards, From Light Bulbs to Luxury Automobiles. Well, thank you, Jay. Uh, my enthusiasm for Packard stems way back from my childhood because my grandfather purchased Packards, and in my collection I have uh, worked with Packards at uh, models and years that uh, he actually had at one time throughout his life. So I appreciate you allowing me to talk about this collection. It's a great collection for the museum, and uh, Packard is actually uh, for the most part, a Michigan company. They were here in Detroit, uh, even though they started in Warren, Ohio. And this is one of their earliest models here. Uh, this is like their, their fourth model of the car company. And it started out as the Ohio Automobile Company. So this has a tag on it, Ohio Automobile Company. One thing I would like to mention, uh, if you look at the front of this car, and then as we continue through the exhibit, maybe note what is different with the rest of the cars as far as the front of this car goes. So I'd like to point out a few things and changes throughout Packard as well as uh, what happened with the automobile design. You notice the fenders in this are kind of like a patent leather material and how open they are. And also the brass in this car. And also the first automobiles were referred to as horseless carriages. And you could see where even though this is an automobile, that it kind of takes on the carriage look of the early years. Also, this is a right-hand drive automobile. The first cars were right-hand drive. And I'll explain that in a little bit, how they transferred over. So this is one of the earliest models of Packard, uh, the spoked wheels, the seat on the back for passengers and there's only uh, 81 of these that were produced so this is uh, one of them that are extremely rare and then if we could transition on to the 1905 you could see how in just a couple years the dramatic changes that went through for comfort we could see this now has a back seat that is facing the front of the car the fenders how they have broadened they're still open but also the brass. And now we could see with this car what was referred to as the yoke. And this was kind of one of Packard's trademarks until they actually stopped producing cars in 1958. And we can see all the brass that has been implemented uh, into this automobile. Hey Chuck, if I could just point out, if you look at this car, they've gone to steel fenders. Well, back there, we still had the leather fenders. And something else is this has got a crank in the very front. If you notice the other car, the crank is on the side. Exactly. I think that's pretty interesting. Yep, exactly. Then as we continue on, still with right-hand drive, uh, and we can start to see how the fenders are starting to close in. They're not quite as open as they were in that 1905 model. And then going into the 1917, in between 1910 and 1917, it was around 1913, that Packard transitioned into the left-hand drive, which as we know in U.S. cars, that's pretty prevalent today. Pretty pathetic. I'd like to point something out here too. These Packard hubs, they all look kind of the same, but there were like 30 different uh, sizes of these with thread size. They're not interchangeable. I learned that from my collection. I've had to get some of those and they're like different thread sizes and that. But what's interesting is, notice the red hexagon, which was also one of Packard's features. And uh, I believe they would paint those red once the car was serviced. Not all of them came out painted like that. The earlier ones, some of them had a round uh, center instead of a hexagon, but most of them had a red hexagon. Also what's interesting is the white tires. Uh, originally rubber was white and they had to dye them black. We would think it would be the opposite. And so you could see how uh, difficult that might have been to keep them clean all the way around being, being white tires. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Uh, I'll just mention a couple of these. These are Packard first. Uh, they had the first air conditioning in their automobiles in 1939, the first to have automatic windows in 1940, and they were also the first to have a steering wheel 
in 1901 instead of a tiller like the wagon wheel. And uh, I read that how the Packard brothers came up with that feature. Uh, James Packard, one of, the, one of the founders, was driving down a bumpy road with that tither and hit a bump and almost got injured because it whipped that tither at him. And he came up with the idea of the steering wheel after that. Uh, this uh, is one of my favorites in the collection, if I could just mention this. This is a 1930 uh, Speedster sedan. Only 16 of these were produced. The reason why they call them a Speedster is they are a body design car, custom Packard custom bodied car. Packard did their own custom body on this one. And notice how it sits low, like even though it's a sedan, it's, it's sporty. So that's why they referred to it as a uh, the Speedster. Well, two things I think of when you look at this is this, this for me, screams the gangster era. When you exactly. See, it just has that look. The other thing that's really interesting about it, you could look at this and somebody said, wait a minute, this has been chopped and lowered. I mean, it just has that look to it because you said, like, it's, it's lower to the ground, everything's so sleek, but just the window depth is a little more narrow. Yep. This is a one off car. This is a prototype Roadster, 1931. Uh, this is, was made by, uh, or designed by the designer, uh, and that's the reason why it's a one-off for the 1931 New York exhibit. And I actually got to see this automobile before it was restored. An amazing restoration job. It has won awards at uh, every show, including Gilmore. Uh, the owner, who's a friend of mine, great guy, has taken it to a number of shows. And um, hard to believe the the way it looks today versus back then uh, before that restoration. Well, we have a great picture of it coming and being pulled out of the barn. It had been, it actually been used during World War II to tow cars and push cars around for an auto shop. And then uh, somebody decided to park in a field. So somebody rescued it and decided, we're gonna save this car, put it in their barn, and it sat there for 50 years. Exactly. So we have a great picture of it being pulled out of the barn before and, it was ever restored. And they found the original build sheet on this car. So everything that was restored is just the way it came from the factory. The pinstripe, the colors, uh, the accessories, amazing automobile. Uh, this is a 1941-80, and uh, James Hollingsworth, uh, out of Dallas, Texas, he passed away a few years ago, wrote the book and called it a pivotal year for Packard. It was pivotal because it was the last year for Packard to come out with the bullet headlights. In 1941, they integrated the headlights into the fenders. Another thing was Packard at that time had one of the largest factories in the world. It was downtown Detroit. And the reason being was they made it big enough because 1940 was a huge sales year for Packards. And they also had some design changes. Of course, we still see the yoke built into the radiator, but this ventilation system here was implemented so that the the car even though some of them had air conditioning the ventilation could go through the uh, automobile uh, this was also the last year for the running boards uh, 41 and 42 they continued running boards uh, as an option but also you could get a Packard at that time without the running boards so the design of the automobile they they sold like over 40,000 in 1940. Uh, this was the largest engine form. It was their pride and joy at that time, the 356 cubic inch straight eight. They say that the crankshaft alone for this engine weighed over a thousand pounds. Nine main bearings, um, just a powerhouse of an engine. Cruise down the road 90 miles an hour, uh, no problem. I will point out too, that for most of you watching, you probably won't realize this, but this car was owned by uh, Norman K. Knight, and of course Norm was the first director here at the museum years ago, and uh, he's passed away, but um, they decided to donate this to the museum, so we're, we're thrilled to have this at the museum to represent one of our very first directors here. And he was kind of considered at the time as Mr. Packard, because he had a sure. huge collection of Packard. I know he had, I think, four or five Packard Darrens at one time, and he was very well known for his Packard, so I right. really appreciate the idea that K. donated it to us. Sure. This is a 1948 Packard uh, Woody uh, station wagon, station sedan. Gets its name because of the, the wood on the side 
in the wood on the trunk. Uh, these can be very delicate. You have to almost treat it like a bolt because if they're given a chance to dry out, they need to be varnished and treated periodically. This is a beautiful example, uh, well kept. We can see this is a 53 patrician. And again, we can see the grill design on this and uh, Packard transferring, uh, transitioning into the 50s and uh, beautiful color. Uh, they introduced their automatic transmission in 1950. So this has an automatic transmission in it. Packard was the first company to actually build their own automatic trans, uh, transmission in 1950. This is another interesting model here. This is a 1939. This is a 12 cylinder. And 1939 was the last year for Packard to put a V12 engine in their car. They continued to build V12 engines for the aircraft. Uh, the Merlin was a V12 Packard. Packard built V12 engines for Rolls-Royce, also for their PT boats. Those are 12 cylinders. Another thing interesting about this automobile, this was the first year that Packard put the slang word is tree on the tree. They have the shifter on the column as opposed to on the floor. So 1938 was the last year that Packard went transitioned from the shifter up to on the column. Then we see the Packard Hawk, 1958. This was the last year for Packard to build an automobile that had their name on it. They purchased Studebaker in 1954 eventually moved the plant to South Bend, Indiana, continued to build under the Packard name. This is a Packard Hawk. This was their sports model. They also made a Packard station wagon and they made a Packard four-door sedan and a two-door hardtop. Each one of those models, they made less than like 700. So these are also extremely rare cars, but uh, we can see the front end design of the car. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I've come across Packard ads from 1958 and uh, Packard was Packard, as it was known then as Packard Studebaker, had the first Mercedes dealerships in the country. So if you look at a 1958 Packard ad, a lot of them will have a Mercedes on the ad because they were the first car company to nationwide carry Mercedes and with their dealerships, 1958. You know, something I find really interesting about this car, you're talking about advertising. The other thing they would do on their advertising, they called this the most original car in America. I've always thought that was interesting because the year before, what was this car? Wasn't it the Studebaker Hawk? Exactly. Rebadged as a Packard for 58. So it's like, okay, so it's really not the most original because the year before it was a different car. Right. So yeah. tell us now, we're at the very oldest or the newest car in the group, and I think we've got 20 or 21 cars in the exhibit. You, you told us to pay attention to something What was that was going to be something iconic that none of the rest of the cars were missing, but the first car was missing. Can you tell us now, give us a clue or answer it, what, what it is that was missing? It would be what they referred to as that yoke uh, grill or front end design. So even though this is a 58, and it's a little bit more prevalent in the sedan where they have carried on with that design and even though with this uh, hood scoop and that is a functional hood scoop this is a turbocharged mccullough car so this isn't just for looks but you could see that design and how it comes up with this and carries on with that with that yoke front end yeah you can see it in the, the fender scoops by the uh, headlights you can see it up there even down below and then they this has been great. Thanks so much for oh, you're welcome. showing us all this. Now, real quick on this, does that have a, almost look like vented hubcaps? Is that what those are? Yes. Yeah, those are, those are vented hubcaps. And then also we can see they carried on with the uh, red hexagon on the hubcap. And uh, yes, and, and we can see where the white walls were not quite as wide as some of the earlier models, but they still did have about a two-inch white wall on there and uh, 
course, they started to introduce radial tires uh, about that time and so forth. And uh, another interesting thing with this car is, <laughs> notice the pads on the outside of the window for your armrest to rest on. Yeah. Chuck, this has been great. We sure hope that. Thank you.